It's Disneyland Paris's 30th anniversary. Why am I not in Paris? I'm Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. And why is one of the reasons that I'm legendary? Because I created the Dragon's Lair underneath the castle in, you guessed it, Paris. I also was among the group at Disney Imagineering that created Big Thunder Mountain Paris. Let me walk you through why. Disney should have me in Paris. They have several people there right now talking about the creation of Disneyland Paris. And they all deserve to be there. Oh, yes. Tony Baxter, Tom Morris, they all deserve to be there. They worked with me and guided me and gave me the authorization to build the Dragon's Lair underneath Paris. But let me tell you something. It didn't start out that way. Disney had thought that the best way to illustrate this dragon was to create a stone, non-moving dragon underneath the castle in Paris. So I went to bat for this dragon. Had I ever done an attraction before? Had I ever created anything like this in my life for a park before? No, but I'll tell you what I did do and what I was. I loved dragons. And I asked myself, if I was a Disney Imagineer, I am, what would I do for an attraction? I started by meeting with the big people at Disney to pitch my idea. And here it is. This is a little model that I created to show people the experience of what it might look like if you go into this cavern. This is a material called foam. And it's dusty, which is why it's in the case. But I did it like this so that they could see the detail that I created as well. But then you did it like this so you could look through like this. And you can see that you would be walking through an actual cavern or cave. And that there would be the addition of this, this marvelous dragon. So allow me to bring you in on what it was like to be an Imagineer and have the opportunity to create these attractions for Disneyland Paris on its 30th anniversary. Let's pretend I'm there and I'm giving you a little talk about what it was like to create Disneyland Paris. This is a picture of me actually in Paris with my dragon's lair. I designed the lighting. I designed everything from the cement up. It's true, I'd never done it before, but didn't matter. We did it. Now, this is me actually sculpting the model. You remember my little model? Here it is, me actually sculpting it. And you can find me in a book <laughs> published <laughs> by Disney with my name on page 80, sculpting with this very picture. Uh, I warn you, they spelled my name wrong, but it's me. Believe me. Here's the actual model. So the dragon you'll notice is uh, got a cut right here in the neck and in the body. Years ago, when I was a young sculptor, I was invited to sculpt this actual dragon for Tokyo Disneyland. I was in high school at the time. I think I did the belly scales or something. There were probably about 50 or 60 students helping to get this dragon complete. It was great to come full circle and see my dragon once again. You see how I say my dragon? <laughs> Mine and about 50 others. <laughs> But the problem with the dragon in Tokyo was that it was cramped. It was squished. It was so squished together. It didn't have a chance to spread its wings and breathe. It looked like it was in some sort of a box or something. And so I think when I presented this to Disney, they got the idea. Well, I mean, Tony Baxter is a real amazing forward thinker. So I can't tell you what was in his head, but he did acknowledge that I had a point. So I created the layer that's all the way around it, the cavern, the way the cavern looks like. And then I also created the animatronics that would make the dragon come to life. Here's a close-up of me. This is a little cardboard cutout. And it was for a time when people were brought through our area at Disney Imagineering to experience some of the rides and attractions that were going to be there. 
this is Dragon's Lair. And many people were very curious as to what the heck does Dragon's Lair actually mean? After all, it's a hub. It's a place where you go from point A to point B. Having been at Disneyland Paris not too long ago, I realized that the through way to see this dragon has pretty much been stopped. You have to actually make a point to see it. It's become a secret which was originally what I kind of wanted because you fans love a secret. So if you've been to Disneyland Paris and you haven't seen the dragon, I guess the secret worked, right? Originally, it was a hub where you would do much like you do at Disneyland or at Walt Disney World, where there's sort of a center area. And if you go one way, you get to Fantasyland, one way you get to Tomorrowland, etc. Only this was underneath the castle in Paris because sometimes it snows in Paris. And when it snows in Paris, it's better to have the dragon indoors or the hub indoors and having a living, breathing 35 foot dragon is really something to see. So I encourage you, if you've missed it, you go see it. This is shortly after I went and saw it in 2000. This is my portfolio picture I took of it. But again, um, the one thing I didn't want was the chain around her neck. And she's a her because you guys told me she was a her. I never really did that. And no, I didn't name her because you guys wanted to name her. All of you fans out there. I just leave that to you. I did it. I did it because I wanted something interesting and exciting. And we had to up the game for the castle because Paris is the castle capital of the world. So you can't just, you know, phone in a castle. You had to sculpt a lot of castles. And this is where Tom Morris came in and he's there. I hope he tells the story of how many castles the Disney Imagineering teams had to create over and over and over again before they were happy with the castle. The cool thing about this castle is you can go to the second floor. The cooler thing about it is that you can see the dragon. That's some nut. Oh, wait, that's me created a living, breathing dragon underneath the castle in Paris. And that's mine. <laughs> Here I am working on the actual model for the Big Thunder Mountain Paris. This is actually why I was made an Imagineer. It took a long time for them to get a clue and hire me as an Imagineer. Let me say that again. It took longer for them to hire me as an Imagineer, but once they did, uh, they were really excited because I had been working for the film industry on many levels, and one of them was sculpting this unusual material called foam. It's a, like, lo a lot like the floral foam that you stick in, except for it's a lot uh, denser, so you can get some good crisp lines like you see here, right? Here I am sculpting the arch. Me and Vicente usually take different uh, areas. And here's my arch, the actual sculpted arch at Imagineering. Here I am in Paris, actually going to see it in the year 2000. It was the first time I got to actually see the Dragon's Lair myself. I did not get to go to Paris to help build it because Disney wanted the shortest distance between two points. So I had to teach a man how to build it. I got the right man though. I got a real good guy to build it. And when I went through, I saw things that only I would know about the model. Here it is actually photographed at Disneyland Paris. I took this, I believe in 2016, there was a race there. And I actually did little tours to talk to people about exactly what I did with Big Thunder and exactly what we did with Big Thunder. Big Thunder was a bit more interesting, but the thing is, is that you guys love it because you go underneath the water and come up on an island. So the boarding area is on one spot. You go underneath the water and you come up on an island and you experience the island of Big Thunder Mountain. And it too was voted the best Big Thunder of all the parks. Did I mention that Disneyland Paris was the first park to be outside of the USA? So this was a lot of pressure on the Imagineers, including yours truly. So those are the reasons why I should be at Disneyland Paris. I don't know if you agree. Post in the comments if you do. Post in the comments if you don't. I just felt today being the day of the anniversary that I had to do a little shout out for myself. And I want you guys to understand that if there's something that you did and don't seem to be getting acknowledged for, some things are better if you best do it yourself.
I hope you've enjoyed this video and you'll continue subscribing. I don't always rant, but uh, I do tell the truth. Do something nice for someone else and happy anniversary, Disneyland Paris. We'll see you again on the other side. This video was made with generous donations from enthusiasts just like you.